The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcast, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning to you. You're listening to the Big Dog, W-I-F-O-F-M in Jessup, 105.5 on your FM dial. Butch Hubbard here with you along Bob Morgan on this, uh, well, it's a Tuesday morning, the uh, ninth day of July. It's now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Nips Car Wash, located on the Highway 301 South in Jessup, just down from McDonald's there on the left, by uh, the Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup and by Murphy Biller Supply. And good morning, Bob. Good morning. All right. We got a couple of sets of guests this morning. One sitting in here with us in the studio, one in the green room. Let's get started. What do we have going on right now? Well, we'll start with the golf tournament this Saturday. The high school golf team, middle school golfers, have a big summer invitational each year set for this Saturday, 8 a.m. shotgun start. And we've got the head golf coach, Mr. Bubba Walker, in to tell us all about it, along with one of his fundraising partners, Mr. Chad Burke. Morning. 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 Good morning. Uh, yes, this, this this Saturday, eight o'clock, Pine Forest Country Club. Uh, we're gonna start a uh, shotgun start at eight o'clock. Um, we got um, several things, uh, chances to win, uh, and uh, we're gonna start off talking about the uh, the big prize on the on the on the ticket. There is the we're calling it a million dollars hole in one, but it's actually four shots. In each shot, if if you make it from 170 yards out, it's uh, $250,000. And how much you have to pay to get in? And to get into that is $25 a ticket uh, or five for 100, and uh, that gets you in the raffle. And at the very end of the when we're all done and all the teams have come in, we will pull four names out, and we will st- those four guys will step over the number nine fairway at at the. Uh, 170 yard mark. We'll have uh, our sponsors for the um, for the hole in one challenge there. Uh, the Wayne Memorial Hospital, American Steel Buildings, and Jones Prescription uh, signs right there at the 170 yard mark with a line and put the ball down. And if it goes in the hole, 250 grand in your pocket. So twenty-five dollars to register to get into the contest. To get into the raffle, only, that don't four, only four of those. Four of those to register to get, to get a shot. shot. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. So it's kind of a raffle to get you in to win, uh, potentially. And if you know you buy a bunch of tickets, you you get all four shots. You can win, make a couple. Of them, you know, if you're like Miles Feltman or Hunter Stuckey or somebody like that. Not, <laughs> like, not like not like me and you. I'm like me. We, and you. I mean, yeah. if we if we pull our name, I mean, that's just. Yeah, I'll save, my, I'll, save my 20, I'll save my twenty. I'll save my twenty-five dollars. You might have a 170-yard club in your bag. <laughs> I don't think so, Coach. <laughs> but you got Chad here. Today. It's all about raising money for the golf team, and I know he's been out, you know, getting sponsors, things like that. So, first of all, how many teams are signed up? Do we right now, times? <clears throat> right now we have ten teams that I know about that are locked in, uh, and I'm still trying to hammer out a couple guys that. I believe are going to play, and uh, we, we're we're looking to have 18. We want to have 18 right. going so into Saturday. So we, yeah, Saturday. yeah. So if you're out there, it's a four-person event. It's $280 a team, $70 a golfer. So yep. But there's going to be all kinds of other yep. prizes, if you, and uh, door prizes. Yep. And when you raffle. come when you come in there in the begin in the morning when you come in the clubhouse, you know we'll have a table set up to pay if you hadn't pay, already paid your 280 for your team. Uh, you can get a couple mulligans there at that table. And then also we'll have uh, $20 that you pay at the beginning. We'll get you in five games during the the round, which will be uh, three closest to the pins and two long drives. And those will all pay out $100 to the winner of those five contests. So we're just getting that taken care of right there at the beginning. You pay $20, it gets you in five games, three closest to the pin and two long drive competitions, which all pay out 100 a piece. Um, <clears throat> and, then, and then we'll have the raffles, uh, the tickets there to buy to, for the uh, million dollar challenge. Um, uh, with your $280 team uh, money that you pay, you automatically get into, on number seven, we're having uh, Neesmith Chevrolet sponsoring uh, hole in one win a car. They're gonna have a beautiful Chevrolet car out there. You, uh, you you put it in the hole on number seven, one shot. 
to get you a beautiful Chevrolet uh, car. Brought, Win a brought new to, car. Brought to you by Neesmith Chevrolet. Um, so that that's that goes in with the with the uh, initial payment. That sounds good. Yeah. So that's again, a lot. Uh, just again, if you're out there listening, all you golfers out there, again, a lot of people golf on Saturdays. So again, cash prizes going to be handed out. And so, again, first place, second place, third place, each flight, is there more That's than right. one flight? Uh, or n- just, no, uh, but just we're, what we're going to do is if you're not in that money, first place pays out 500, second place 300, third place 200. If you're not in one of those spots, we're going to put a raffle ticket in a hat with everybody else's team, and we're going to pull one out, and one team will get their money back. Mm-hmm. So we'll have a raffle to get the money back for one team. Um, We'll have a, a 50-50 going on throughout the day. And uh, and then we've got, like I said, $20 gets you in five games. Uh, you automatically get in on the hole-in-one for a car. And then uh, you buy your raffle tickets, which gets you into the uh, raffle to you got to be drawing. excited. I mean, that golf season's still months away. You've got to be excited. All those middle school talented golfers are yeah, the high school, yes. plus all your girls are coming back from last year. Yeah, so it's going to be, uh, be a banner season for golf. It's going to be an exciting spring. Uh, I see uh, I see a lot of those young kids out there uh, throughout this summer here uh, working on their games. And, they're, and they're, uh, they're, you know, the girls are turning the corner right there, just really tuning it in and, and, and becoming uh, good golfers. You know, they're right there. Uh, and, then, and then these young guys uh, – have been working at it for a long time and 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 have games and and you know we got them for four years so um you know one of them you know is, is chad's son right uh, old finley he's yep. pretty good but again if you just listen coach Bubba walker golf coach and talk about the big event saturday still time to sign up yep. so once you get the particulars the date the time and yep. where they who do they uh, call to get signed up saturday uh this saturday july uh 13th uh we will have a shotgun start at eight o'clock. Um, if you are interested in putting a team in, you can you can call me. Uh, I, I I was listening to Bob's show the other day and I heard him giving out my phone number and I was like, whoa, wait, he's just giving out my phone number over there. But th- that's cool. If you want to call me, if you got that was the fly. Yeah, I know. That's, that's I, know. Really <laughs> I know. I know. Two two nine. Page, I don't make it. I just report. Exactly. It. Exactly. Case, I read it. Two two nine four five six. Three five eight five, and we'll we'll give it again before we get off. If you want to get ready to write it down, and you're interested in putting a team in, but it's uh, my my cell phone number is two two nine four five six three five eight five. Uh, Bubble Walker, you can give me a call, and uh, we'll get you in and get you going. Um, we're just excited to get everybody out there, have some fun. You know, we try and do our best to put it together where it's, you know, a lot of chances to win, but everybody's still having fun. And we're going to feed everybody. So uh, there's going to be a meal after the yeah, event. Yeah, hamburgers, so hot dogs, gets and, fed, so a good meal. Good. And then right there you'll have a little entertainment. You know, you want to stick around because you got to – if we're going to pull out a team that uh, to get their money back and you got to you got to be there to get your money back, we pull your name out. And plus you want to uh, – if you're not getting in on the uh, $250,000 shots, the four shots for $250,000, then, then you at least want to – at least watch, watch it. Watch, 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 watch uh, I've seen somebody win a car out there one year. Did you really? Oh yeah. All right, Nice yeah. Smith Chevrolet, get ready. I've seen it. Bob, I've seen it take. Bob's, I've seen it take place. Bob sent it. I didn't win it, but oh, I saw yeah? it. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> hey, we're also going to have the uh, goodie bags <laughs> from BB and T Bank. Yeah, Raymond Carl. Brown. Yeah. He gave us a lot of goodie bags to give out. Yep. So you'll have a goodie bag in your cart when we get going, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Chad, anybody that you want to um, thank on this um, uh, golf tournament coming up? We had we had 50 sponsors mm. for this golf tournament, so okay. we had a lot of support. I was very excited about that. Um, there's so many to name, I couldn't name all 50 of them, but okay. a lot of local businesses helped out. We'll right. have the signs up on the holes. So yes, sir. We'll have, a, right. we'll have all the signs up on each hole as well as the, the million-dollar shot signs out there and uh, – we really appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. You know, okay. golf's a great sport, and this this is a good fundraiser for and this. And once county. again, the fundraiser um, for this golf tournament, the funds go to what now? Once again, to the golf program. Straight to the golf, golf program there at Wayne County High School. Everything goes straight to the golf program. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, you know, uniforms and travel and 
um, you know, um, golf balls are kind of expensive. Good thing about it, the course is in great shape as well. Oh so, my God. So. Paige and his crew do an incredible job mm -hmm. out there. That place is gorgeous. It's a hidden jewel here in, in our, we're so lucky to have it. So, okay, well, we yeah. appreciate you coming in. Again, we'll Bob. keep promoting it all the yeah, way up to Saturday and hopefully we'll get those eight other teams this morning and if you, see, if you sell it out, out, let us know. I want them to remember that even though you, if you don't win in the top three, you have a chance to get all your money back. So. Uh, that's very important because, you know, a lot of us go out there to have fun, you know, and we also have a chance to get our money back. So, Okay, sounds good. Good luck with the tournament this weekend, guys. No problem. Good to see you. And once again, my cell phone number is 229-456-3585 if, if you're interested. Or in getting call the Pro Shop at 426 There's still a sign-up sheet at the Pro Shop. Yep. And there you go, Pine Park, Country, um, Pro Shop. Okay. All right, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WYFO. More guests coming up here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show. Stay tuned. Summer has arrived, and so have all the great summer deals. Now's the perfect time to shop in downtown Jessup. It's the Downtown Development Authority Summer Spectacular promotion throughout the entire month of July. Each time you spend over the minimum amount in a participating merchant, you'll be entered to win one of four great prizes. A downtown gift basket valued at over $500, a $250 gift certificate, a $100 gift certificate, or a $50 $50 gift certificate. Winners will be announced on August 6th. What are you waiting for? Shop downtown Jessup today for your chance to win. Hi, good morning. We're mostly sunny. East breeze, a 50% chance of locally heavy showers and thunderstorms, low 90s. Heat index up to the danger level, up to 105. Mostly cloudy tonight, 40% chance of evening showers and thunderstorms, mid 70s. Tomorrow, chance of showers and thunderstorms early. Then showers and thunderstorms likely in the afternoon, highs in the low 90s. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, FM in Jessup 105.5. When your FM dial, 12 minutes after 8 o'clock here on this Tuesday morning, world-famous Butch and Bob show here on the Big Dog. And we continue on with more guests here on the Bob, uh, Butch and Bob show. Bob, who do we have now? We've got some world-renowned chefs in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> World-renowned chefs. They, they cook for the governor. They cook yeah, for the governor. All right. So we got Timmy Rozier, Mr. Pusho in here. You got a, another event coming up. Uh, you want to tell everybody about? It, so you want some air time? So who wants to go first, Timmy? We uh, Rozier, right? We'll yes, ahead. we're gonna do a fundraiser and sell Boston butts for um, Tim and Pat Sutton. Um, they lost everything a few weeks ago, as most of y'all know. And uh, lost everything how house fire house fire okay so we're just trying to figure out we were sitting around trying to figure out what we could do to help them um try to get something going you know and uh we know how to cook so <laughs> we figured best thing we could do is sell boston butts we're looking to try to get we have a few sponsors already we don't want to have any we're going to tie up a few of us got together we're going to put our money in to buy all the meat but we're looking to try to get sponsors so that we don't have to take any money out and everything we sell, all the money goes directly to Tim and Pat. So where you'll be cooking the butts and where will people pick the butts up at? We're going to pick them up Saturday, July the 20th, yes. 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, from 9 o'clock in the morning to lunchtime at Purvis Well and Pump, 930 Odom Highway, Jessup, Georgia, right down from Ian Green's. Okay, and that's kind of right there where Joy Williamson Road runs that's right. into, that's right. Um, that's right. uh, into the uh, Highway 341 there. That's right, right there where the police officers are always at during, right, right during school, school time. <laughs> and what would they be sold for? What, uh, we're going to sell them for $25. Uh, there's some tickets at Ian Green's. There's some tickets at Ace Hardware. There's tickets at Wayne Feed and Seed. And there's supposed to be some books going to the Crossroads store today. Steve Jones is going to help us. Do you try have some in the truck? I do not have any. We're... I will get some for anybody in town. I'll get some and carry them by Kim's office, uh, 183 North Macon Street. Who's Any, office? My wife, Kim uh, Rozier, CPA, okay. 183 North Macon Street. I'll get some and carry them by there, and they'll be with Nikki at the front desk. All right. Um, I, I feel like everybody – Everybody's had a kid in any sports program in Wayne County has some ties to Sheffield Sports Shop. They've made trophies. They've made jerseys. They've sold gloves and bats and shoes and everything for years and years and years. And I, I just I feel like that's something we can do to give back to them to help them um, in the trying time that they're having at their house. Yeah, I talked to Becky yesterday. He's amazing. You don't you don't think about losing everything, but yeah. you don't have a toothbrush. You don't have that's a bra. Right. You don't you don't have anything. Yeah, you go look. You go look yeah. for something. So it's amazing. So I know the community wants to help them out. I know they got a big event uh, 
Also dropping reception, I believe, this coming Monday at the train depot, beginning at 5 o'clock. So people can go by there as well. But, again, you're doing the butt. So tell us again how they Anybody that one. don't want to buy a butt or anybody that wants to buy a butt and donate it to somebody, just contact me or Joseph. Uh, we'll take your money for donations and put it toward the meat. Um, we'll do anything you want to try to help them raise some money. And once again, they pick them up date and time. July the tw end of the twentieth. It is end of the Saturday, July the twentieth from nine o'clock in the morning to lunchtime. We're so going to cook them week from this Saturday. Week That's from right. Saturday, so we're going to cook them Friday. The whole week to get in touch with you, order yeah. the butt, and we're then pick cook them up. Friday night, and and we're going to have everybody lined up Saturday morning. We'll probably be tired from being up all night, but yeah, we'll have somebody lined up Saturday morning to be there taking tickets and passing them out. Okay. And once again, if a person wants to go ahead and pre-order and get their uh, butt ordered. How do they do that? They can contact me or Joseph. Uh, or go Timmy by Roger or Joseph Puccio. Or where? go by Wayne Feed and Seed, uh, Harris Ace, Ian Green, or the Crossroads Store. Okay. And uh, shout out to the Dunright crew this morning. They out there hard working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we the, had we the, had some the people. Done right or the do right? Done right. <laughs> done right. We done done right. We we got several folks that have donated money that yeah. are going to pay towards the Boston Bucks. Of course, nobody wanted their name yeah. spread out, but uh. We, we've had six or seven hundred dollars worth of money donated to help pay for the Boston butts, so that'll be six or seven hundred more dollars that goes directly to, to the family. Right. To the family. So mm -hmm. they got um, they got a new grandbaby that's due to be born anytime, and they lost all their baby stuff. They lost. I mean, they lost everything. So right. anytime we can help somebody, we try. That's right. No doubt. And like I said, like I said, most people know Tim and Pat Sutton mm -hmm. and the family. So like I said, they had Sheffields for years here and like i said they've always donated to a lot of causes as well so yes. just a way to pay back so i know a lot of people have been doing that i know they had a one of the banks i think prime south bank has a fund set up as well you can go by make a donation there they have the big event coming up and monday at the depot then you can stop by there or they can do this by, by this button next saturday think about all the lives and people they've affected by just sponsoring baseball teams and you know, all that stuff over the years, all the little kids they've helped and stuff like that. So, it's I mean, we figure it's the least we can do. All right. Sounds like a great thing. So, again, once again, it's going to be next Saturday, but they can pre-order the, the phone numbers. Anytime, 29 in. Give them the name and numbers to call again. Uh, you can contact me, Timmy Rozier, or or Joseph Puccio. Uh, most people have our cell phone numbers. If not, you know somebody that does. Um, <laughs> look us up on Facebook, anything. <laughs> Uh, you know, just get a hold of us. We'll be sure you, that you get a ticket or a bud or whatever you want. And we appreciate it. Okay. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. More of the world famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. Vendors and choppers wanted for the first annual Junior Flea Market at the Odom Depot July 13th from 8 until 3. Children from 8 to 18 can set up and sell items. Arts and crafts, yard sale items, fresh produce, baked goods, lemonade, furniture, face painting, sand art, and more. Deadline for application is Wednesday, July 10th. Spaces are limited, so pick up your application today at Odom City Hall. The first annual Odom Homecoming Junior Flea Market, Saturday, July 13th from 8 until 3. Hi, good morning. We're mostly sunny. East breeze, a 50% chance of locally heavy showers and thunderstorms, low 90s. Heat index up to the danger level, up to 105. Mostly cloudy tonight, 40% chance of evening showers and thunderstorms, mid 70s. Tomorrow, chance of showers and thunderstorms early. Then showers and thunderstorms likely in the afternoon, highs in the low 90s. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. We would like to let everyone know that, um, and Bob, you pretty well know this too, that we have no phone service here at the radio station and limited Internet. We got hit by lightning last Wednesday afternoon. Matter of fact, I want to say we, right outside there, sounds like it was on around the power pole area or something like that. It hit Comcast and... The lightning came into the radio station and did the Watusi on their equipment and some of ours, but knocked out our phone system, too. So we've been waiting since last Wednesday afternoon for Comcast to come out here and repair it so we can run a business like we're supposed to. Uh, no phone service, uh, very limited Internet, and the only reason why we have that is because uh, <clears throat> Jonathan, our operations uh, manager here and production manager, uh, 
has a thing we call a little hockey puck, which is a small little Wi-Fi thing that he's able to use for us to be able to have, you know, uh, Wi-Fi in here and some Internet and stuff like that. But it's on a limited basis. But we called them on Wednesday afternoon there at Comcast Business and uh, the, the business section and said that we need them to come out here and repair it. And it has not been repaired yet. So we're waiting for Comcast to come out here and get Jessa Broadcasting back in business, a federally licensed uh, uh, media medium uh, that uh, uh, needs um, prompt service because we are important to the community, not only because of uh, local news and stuff like that, but the main thing for the, from that standpoint is, is um, uh, uh, stuff with the uh, FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, GEMA, Georgia Emergency Management Agency, our local emergency management agency, and other situations where we're supposed to get out um, uh, public information like that. So Comcast, we're waiting for you to come out here to 2420 Waycross Highway in Jessup, your business section, with Repair Guy, and get it where we can have phone lines and Internet. It's been since Wednesday, Bob. Tomorrow will be a week that we have not had phone lines or Internet that's come in through Comcast. We're waiting for their truck to show up and their technician to take care of a business. They courted us hard for five years to go over to Comcast business. And now that we need them because of lightning, we ain't around. (laughs) So if you try to call into the radio station, remember, we're waiting on Comcast to uh, come out to the radio station one of the repair guys from the business section where it's not like we're a home and we're waiting for our TV to come back home. That would be one thing. But, well, you know, when you pushed hard and you sold hard to get us to change over from one company over to Comcast, and we're a very important communications, uh, uh, life, federally licensed communications medium here in uh, Wayne County, you would think they put a little priority on that. But we're still waiting for them to come out, Comcast to um, to take care of our situation here so we can have internet, phone lines, and things of that sort so we can serve the community as we're licensed to by the federal government. I got it off my chest, Bob. I'm tired. Of, I have been in the radio business for, for over 40 years, and never, and never in 40 years has it taken almost a week for a utility to come out and take care of their equipment. I can I know I can call Allen at Georgia Power and they'd be out here just as soon as they possibly could. Same thing if if we same thing when I when, when had Satilla when we've had uh, their service before um, uh, with with even with my homes uh, with um, with the old Bell South because we had a Bell South office here in town we knew the folks down there and uh, but um, just waiting for Comcast to say, hey, you know, we got a very important business out there that's a customer of ours that is licensed by the federal government to serve the community, and we're having a difficult time doing that without phones and Internet. So I'm just waiting for that bucket truck to drive up out there and fix whatever needs to be fixed and bring whatever equipment needs to be done because it's been almost a week. Can you imagine running a business without phones and Internet? And that's what we've had to do as we've been waiting for Comcast to show up and do their thing. I'm not saying anything because I heard your cause. I had a bad dealings with Comcast personally, so I'm, I got direct TV eight years ago. And okay. Well, I, I can, you know, turn back since. Well, there's one thing about, you know, uh, like I said, they courted us for a long time with, uh, you know, faster internet, uh, keep the same phone number. Uh, 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 lower prices, and, and on all that, they came through. Lower prices, faster Internet, lower prices than what we had before on our phone Internet service. But I know good and well if it had been on the other service, it had already been repaired by now. Okay? So we're just waiting for Comcast to come out here and get our uh, equipment fixed here, which it's back here on the back wall in the engineering room. Because the lightning came in through their their had they had to uh, through their cable came in through their equipment and knocked out some of ours, and we've already ordered it, and it's in coming in today, and that's ordering new equipment from way out of town. So um, I'm just very frustrated that it's taken almost a week for Comcast to come out here and get our phones fixed and our internet fixed, because you know 
They, they pushed hard. Yeah, we're going to service you. We're going to do it right. Yeah, you can depend upon us. All right, Comcast, where are you? I'm frustrated, Bob. I know, I, you know, I, I'm just frustrated. I, I can tell. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here it is. We've I gone. can't help you because I don't have, I don't have. You know, here like we are. Said, if it's like, say, George Pryor, I know Alan Volk, I got his business card. I got, yeah. so I don't have anybody. Like I said, yeah. I did away with them eight years ago personally. So I said, yeah. once I turned to direct TV, I've been good as gold. So. If it would be one thing if it was if I was at home and I was missing my my television uh, viewing. That's one thing. Right. Okay, that's 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 not all that important. But when you are a federally licensed medium to provide a service to the community, you think that Comcast would get a little that say, hey, you know, you know this this is this is important to the federal government here. So they probably didn't work on Thursday and the fourth, but. They probably worked on Friday. Friday, Saturday. They, Saturday, they, they I've Saturday, had I've had repair Monday, guys Tuesday, from right, yeah. I've had repair guys from utility companies out at my radio stations through the years on every, every day, day, whether it's a holiday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, 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 didn't matter Monday. when it was. Uh, but um, you know, um, needless to say, once we get past this um, situation here with Comcast, I'm going to find the higher uppy ups. The upper ups, the topper management, top management, not topper member, the top management to find out, and they're going to get a, some some of my um, my thoughts. You know, they're going. I'm going. I'm going to have their personal phone number, and um, because this is just you know, I've never known a television radio or TV station or radio station who are both licensed by the federal government provides a service and a very important service to the community, and we're required to do that to get put off like we have by Comcast for almost a week now. Oh, I feel better, Bob. Good. That was good therapy. I'm glad you got off your chest. That <laughs> <laughs> was all about. It's good therapy. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> Speaking of therapy, Bob, it looks like some folks are getting good therapy last night at the county council meeting from uh, on the different sides there. Some folks who say, here are the rules we need to go by them. Other ones are saying, well, you know, things have not been that bad. Let's go this way. And I, I, you know, you just get the, the both sides of issues as you normally do. It's just uh, it's sad to see the divisiveness. Man, it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Like I said it's a 3-2 board at the moment, so... It's so sad to see it. You hate to see it like that, but that's what it is. I told that story. Somebody at our coffee group said it months ago that I'd hate to have a job where three people decide my fate and jobs like school superintendent, county administrator, city manager. Right. That's what you've got. Your life, the hood, is in the hand of three. You have to have, they make the joke all the time, you got to juggle three. Well, well, the thing about it is, you got a three, you got a job. You got a three out of five, you got a job. You the lose thing about three, it, you got a job. You got this. You, it's amazing how five people can look at the same ordinances, rules, regulations, laws. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, everything that's put down in the manuals. Okay, and and the employee uh, descriptions and what state and what is stated by the state uh, laws by the state of Georgia and all that. Now five get... people can look at it and two say it says it this way, and three of them says it says it this way. Well, I think the three are saying that he was put in a tough situation and and it was worse than he thought it was when he took the job. And the fact that he got us out of the red is you know, something to be. Happy about, but like I said, what got us out of the rate, I think, is that five mil increase that they Well, the five mil increase brought in a lot of money. So, right, yeah, that, money, that's, so. they said they had to have that to get out of the rate. It's, yeah, no, some, uh, it's no secret. They said, we got to have five mils to get out of the rate. And they got the five mils and we're out of the rate, right? When you came off the, you know, came from behind the bench where they sit and got to the podium. And when he got to that point where Texas hit, I thought he was going to say he's out. So, but he did say he's staying. So, Oh, well, you had the three votes. All right, three votes. So I said, as long as you got three votes, you got a job. Yeah. But, yeah that's just a shame. I want to get a copy of the audit. Like I said, the audit hasn't been passed by the state, so they didn't give one out. But there's two and a half pages of violations. I want to see what the violations are. You know, Kevin McCreary says they're basically what he said in his previous meeting. So he didn't back down at all. He asked that a reprimand be. And that, that's how this all began. You know, Kevin McCreary and Hickox. They wanted a private reprimand behind closed doors 
couldn't get a third vote. So they went public with their dissatisfaction. Still didn't get a third vote. Made a motion, got a second. Still didn't get a third vote. So it's just both sides are dug in. Neither side seems to want to budge. It's a 3-2 board at the moment. It's going to be interesting to see how it all turns out because you would want the five of them to get along. You would want the county administrator to get along with the five county commissioners. Um, uh, but it doesn't seem to be happening the way. You seem to have two that thinks that uh, some violations have been made according to what they see the done versus what the uh, rules and regulations and law are. And you got three who's three who says, well, no violations have been uh, committed in any type of way, and so we're not going to vote for a reprimand. And so you've got, just like you do on a, 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 I mean, I've asked judges that before. How can you have a nine people on a judge uh, on, a, on a court like the Supreme Court and five vote one and four vote the other way? It's just that people look at things in different ways. It wasn't good when the auditor said it's a mess. No, that wasn't good. You know, he said they're moving in the right direction, but it's still a mess. So that's not a good audit report, in my opinion. You know, when the auditor sits there and tells you point blank, it's still a mess. That, Ordinances are being violated, and it's not doing, you know, it's not the way it should be. Like, like I said, but that's not his. All he does is present the audit. I mean, he doesn't, right, he, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't make decisions, and that's all. They kept asking him what to do. He said, that's that's your decision. That's not my decision. I'm here to just present the audit. So, Well, we wish everyone the best on that for the uh, citizens of Wayne County. And we again, just hope just the truth is being told. I just want to invite anybody on that board, the administrator, that's what this show is for. Yeah. Anytime they want to come, they're more than welcome to come. I said we'll have more from last. You know, it's hard to get all of it in a newscast <laughs> in one day. So we've got the vote. We've got more comments. We've got, you know, I said I've got the entire Ed uh, written thing on. We'll probably play it one morning on the Butch and okay. Bob show. Just play the whole 10-minute speech that he made what well, he made at the county commissioners right. meeting last night but that's but it was just basically weird. defending his his right. side of the it issue was just right weird how it went though like i said they they changed the agenda at the beginning to go items with the commissioners before items with the administrator the commissioners all spoke the three commissioners in his corner commended him for the job he did then he got up from the, the where he was sitting and came down to the podium to address the commissioners and read the 10-minute statement mm -hmm. and exited stage right <laughs> <laughs> Exit stage, right. stage right. Exit stage right. So it's a, and you know, just watching county city government for 35 years, to me, it's just a sad situation. It's a mess to have that divisiveness because, as they said all the time, they have all these retreats and all this stuff. Unless everybody's pulling in the same direction, not much is going to get done. So, well, let's hope that they can get things this, worked out. It's not just the county divisiveness. There's still that divisiveness between the county and the city where they can't get together on animal control. They can't get together on the teeth floss. They can't get together. They don't. They don't get together on anything. I mean, and that's when's, between when's, the county board and the, the city, city board. When's the, city last time, when's the last time they sat down together? I don't know. I mean, it's sad. So. Well, basically, you know, they all work for the citizens of Wayne County. You know, and uh, the citizens of Wayne County uh, want the truth. You know, just tell us the truth. You know, are these things happening? Are they not happening? You know, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, get your act together, basically, and let's all five commissioners and the county administrator work in the direction for the betterment of the of Wayne County. And that's what folks want. But more than anything, they want the truth. And and we'd like for the county administrator, county commissioners to come on the Butch and Bob show, because we can sit here and, and, and try to read between the lines and speculate. Uh, coffee shops and and uh, other places around town can do the same thing. But we need to hear it from the horse's mouth right here on the Butch and Bob show and say, here's my side, here's what I'm thinking. And then out of all that, how can they all, how, all six of them, the five board members and the county administrator, work together for the betterment of Wayne County? Yeah, one thing that needs to be stressed, like I said, they said that the ordinances are too, you know, the, the administrator saying they're too restricted. And so... And they all stated last night that there may be some ordinances that just aren't feasible. So they need to have a work session to discuss the ordinances and possibly change ordinances to try to get all this worked out. But I said Kevin McCreary just wants the accountability. I mean, he's saying he's not trying to bash anybody. He just wants something written down that says this isn't the way it's supposed to be done. It's, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not been done that way in 10 years. It's still not the right way. The audit says it's not the right way, so he's just basically saying something needs to 
be done to make it go the right way. So, but the other three commissioners don't see it that way. They're in his corner and they think he's done a good job. Like I said, apparently we were broke for two years and we're not broke anymore, but a five mil increase will make you not broke. Well, so we'll see how it all plays. But I'd love to have any of them come in. Yeah, please they, they come know, in. They Let's know talk more. about it. I said they get, the, they get the monthly budget report. They get the cheat sheets, as they call them. They know a lot more about the subject than I do. Okay, someone said, uh, you are talking about people want the truth. Uh, some people, one person just text in, uh, what we want is accountability. Well, that's what Kevin McCreary is asking for. I mean, he's just asking that everything be accounted for and be transparent. And, I mean, he just felt that some action needed to be taken so it doesn't happen again. But I said he didn't get a third vote. He didn't get a third vote in a closed-door session. He didn't get a third vote in the open session. He didn't get a third vote when he made a motion. So, Are, I mean, are you getting the impression from the three uh, county commissioners that, um, that um, have not – wanted to reprimand thinks that the current county administrator has not um, broken any ordinances or done anything that uh, was against the I rules think, and regulations do they think that i think talking to them they just feel that he was put in a bad situation when he took the job they didn't realize it was as bad as they thought it was i mean they oh, it was bad did, but they didn't realize it i mean he even admitted in a statement it was worse than what he thought it was when he took the job and they feel that he's done a good job of getting them out of the red because, according to him last night in his statement, when he took over, they barely had money to make payroll. That's how bad it, the, the situation was. But listen to it last night. You know, you had all these funds. You got t splosh You got splosh You got this. You got that. It just seems like everything's just being thrown together, and there's no, there's, there's no way to tell what's what, mm -hmm. which is not – when an auditor looks at it, you know, he said, I think it's T-Sploss money. I'm not sure. Steve, I have to go back. They don't, they don't know. It's well, just all, not, it's yeah. all thrown together. Are, you not are, are, are they supposed to keep funds separate? And they're then, you're, and separate. then you're not supposed to transfer I mean, funds from one right. department to another and department. And you're not supposed to spend yeah. X amount of money without right. the board member. Uh, I mean, everybody's heard this. Oh, we have $4.7 million of T-Sploss. We're never paying that money back. I mean, they keep saying they're going to pay it back so much for 20-something years. You might as well just write that off. Unless the government comes down and says, we demand our $4.7 million, they probably don't even know we owe the file for it. I don't, I don't think – it's just it's just a number out there. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. We owe them $4.7 million. Yeah, good luck getting that. We're broke. we got no money. Yeah. What are they going to do, come shut us down? Yeah, someone uh, – Close the, the county. <laughs> okay, the person who texted in, what we want is accountability, is Commissioner Ralph Hickox. What we want is accountability, and that's from uh, Commissioner – Ralph Hickox, and someone texted in, if we're not in the red, when are they going to drop the mills? Well, spending has got to drop before you drop right. the mills. Well, that's the plan. I mean, they want to hope to get to a point where they can roll back the millage sum. I mean, that's always... Well, they mentioned a, that when they passed yeah, it. Yeah, that's always a popular move by the commissioner when he's out seeking a re-election, but... And uh, just to be, you know, to talk about transparency, let's just be real transparent. Let's go back to the election. Okay, because it's all about personalities. When you have a fellow commissioner go out and get people to run against you, you're not really on that person's side. Okay, yeah. So that's where the divisiveness begins. So you're saying there's some uh, personality there's conflicts some between commissioners. Per there's definite personality conflicts. Okay. One commissioner can say it's raining. The other's going to say it's sunshine. Okay. But <laughs> I understand because that commissioner went out there and sought opponents. For those commissioners, one who was the longest serving commissioner is no longer on the board. So there's just a lot of that starts a bad person. It's not a hard to agree on anything when you want uh, to speak to somebody. I mean, huh? they're, they're not. I mean, it's like they're so far. I mean, it's like, like I said, he could say it's raining. They're going to say mm -hmm. it's sunshine skies. Okay. It all goes back. So to they. The so you're saying both of them could take a look at the same rule, think, regulation, think, ordinance, and disagree more, on it because more, they don't like each there's other. There's more to this than meets the eye. This goes back to the hard feelings that were set back in the election. Okay. When a commissioner sought and got opponents to run against other opponents, they okay. had people run against Boot. They had people run against Mike Roberts. They had people run against Jack. And the fact that a fellow commissioner who serves on the board with you did that. That's where all this bad sentiment begins, and it's not gotten any better 
in a retreat or wherever. So you're so, saying these commissioners would never go for what these for other commissioners right would want now, them if because he's on fire they want to throw a bucket of water on him. That's how bad the feelings are wow. about that commissioner and these other commissioners, in wow. my opinion. Okay. Anybody wants to come disagree, come disagree. Well, I'll be glad to debate it. But that's where the sentiment. I, and I used to have that argument with other people in office. You don't get involved in other people's elections. Run your own race and let the other commissioners run their race. But you don't go seek opposition against your fellow commissioner and then expect that fellow commissioner to be kumbaya with you after the election. Mm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So there's your full transparency where all this began, and it continues on to this day. Hmm. If anybody wants to come debate that and disagree, come on. you're more than welcome to come. I'll roll out the red carpet. Okay. All right. But let's be transparent. Let's look at the whole board and see where all this animosity began. It began back in the election. Yeah. We need transparency, accountability, so, and the truth. That's what the citizens of Wayne County deserve. Personalities conflicting. It's a 3-2 board. It's not good for anybody. No, it's not. Because we've said it time and time. Everybody said it. Unless everybody's pulling in the same direction, we're not not getting anywhere. We're not getting anything done. Yeah. Well, hopefully they can get it all worked out eventually, and uh, and things will happen where we don't have to report on this kind of stuff. We're talking about the progress the county's making. We can talk about the progress the county's making with the city, and uh, which is beneficial to all the citizens of Wayne County. But right now, according to Bob, and of course what you can hear on the news, it's a mess. I ran into the former commissioner who got beat July 4th in Scriven. Mm-hmm. He's still hot. He's still hot. Yeah. He's, he hasn't got over it. He ain't got over it yet. He's um, not going to get over it for a long, long time. Okay. So. All right, Bob. Well, Bob will continue to report on this and have updates on what's going on with the county government. Thank you, Bob. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by the Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup on Chariot Broad, by Murphy Builder Supply on Northeast Broad Street, and by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South here in Jessup. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.